We're going to continue the conversation here in studio with our national college football analyst, Smoke Dixon, and of course the coach, Carl Reed. You guys have some great perspective on everything that's happening in Ann Arbor. And looking back, at, we talked about the legacy, and I'm going to ask you guys that question in just a bit. But things were not always super rosy at Michigan with Harbaugh. Brandon Marcello mentioned it. People wanted him fired after the 2020 season. But, Smoke, maybe what are some lessons that other programs can learn about the administration's patience with Harbaugh? Well, at the end of the day, when you're building something, you can't just build something in a Harbaugh. Like, we live in a microwave society where everybody goes and pushes a button, you get a great meal. But from the meals that we're used to, grandma and mom sat all day and made that meal well. So you have to understand that you've you got to have a guy that's going to be able to steady the course understand that they have to build a foundation. And when you build a foundation, you gotta get your people in line and have a culture built there. So when you have adversity, you can get through it. But if you're looking at just, we gotta win next year, if we don't win next year, we're getting ready, no. Study the course, understand who you're working with, and knowing that this guy that you had, Jim Harbaugh, is a championship winner. He won at San Diego, Stanford, and he also won at San Francisco. So it's just a matter of time that when you study guys like this, when you're an AD, you still got to evaluate coaches as well, too. You can't just go in and say, if you're not winning, you can't play. I mean, you can't, you can't do it anymore. Study the course, take your time, and allow this course to run through so you can build a proper foundation and build, and build a program to win for the long term. People don't understand, Smoke, how hard it is to win at football. And so when you get somebody like a Jim Harbaugh and you give him the opportunity to run his program the way he wants, put his staff in place the way he wants to put it in play, and to get to do things the way he wants to do it. It takes some time, but when it gets figured out, now you're talking about big time winning football, and Michigan stayed out the way. They allowed him to build this program. They allowed him to do it in his image, the way that he wanted to do it, and they reaped the benefits of it by winning a national championship in the end. Yeah, let me tell you how rare that is. Schools are spending more than $125 million on buyouts alone this offseason. I know a lot of that is Jimbo Fisher, but it's still a ton of money. So some of that patience can help you financially as well. Uh, I know Michigan fans aren't super patient when it comes to finding out who their next head coach is. And it sounds like it's got to be offensive coordinator Sharon Moore. I mean, he is widely seen as the front runner for this job. 4-0 as an interim this year, just his ability to stabilize this program. But, Carl, what did you see from him this season when he stepped in in an interim role and just his experience as a whole in college football that makes him the man for this job? Not only did he step in in an interim role, he won some big games. You're talking about beating Penn State, beating Ohio State when he was the head coach in those games, winning and doing that. Even before that, Joe Moore award-winning offensive line coach, best offensive line in the country the last several years. He recruited him. Michigan has always wanted a Michigan man, and typically that means somebody that graduated from Michigan. But his apprenticeship to Jim Harbaugh is going to qualify him as somebody who's going to be considered a Michigan man, knows that program inside out. The kids in that program love him. The coaches, for them to continue to have continuity and the way that that program is set up, you're going to minimize the amount of players that go in the transfer portal by staying with Sharon Moore, letting them continue to take the program forward. I think nothing else makes sense for Michigan. Well, when you look at it and you're trying to and you're judging a coach, I will always judge a coach by how do you handle adversity? And at Michigan, this was probably the most adverse time yeah. in, our, in our college football. We've never had anything like what was going on in Michigan. And what did he end up doing? Penn State, bust him in the mouth. Buckeyes, bust him in the mouth. And on top of that, he held his team together mm -hmm. while his boss was out of the building. So how can you not want somebody like that that's going to galvanize your team? Bring your team together. Last time I checked, that's what a coach is supposed to do. And you know what the players do? They play for him. And they love playing for Michigan, but they also love playing for Coach Moore. You talk about the stabilizing force that is Sharon Moore. That was obviously evident during the season and very important when Jim Harbaugh was suspended for six games. But it's going to be even more important now that this transfer portal window is open. They're going through a, cho a coaching change and everything that's happening in the world of college football. You need that stability. So, Smoke, what happens if they open this search up beyond Sharon Moore? Well, we just saw something happen down in Tuscaloosa that we never thought was going to happen. Guys just getting up and leaving. Nick Saban in the mecca of college football, which is Alabama. And you have this guy walk out of your building. I mean, forget the tears and all that other stuff. But these guys love playing for him. 
You take them out the building, bring somebody else in. Those guys are leaving left and right. They're not probably leaving out this window, but when it comes to the spring window, you're going to have a team that might win five games, depending on who you bring in. Because when you have a, a team that's that connected emotionally and then build a culture and understand exactly what they are supposed to do, when they're supposed to do it, how they're supposed to do it, you bring somebody in there new, that takes you about two to three years just to build that culture back up. Mm -hmm. It would be catastrophic for Michigan to not hire Sharon Moore. Jim Harbaugh built one of the last programs based on family, based on culture, based on emotion. You use that word emotion. And so if you take the guy that is a huge fabric of that in Sharon Moore and don't give him the job, you're going to put everybody's emotions in the wrong place. And you're going to have a mass exodus of players in the transfer portal. You're going to have guys that sign with you on national signing day that went out. And you're going to upset the high school coaches in that part of the country who also want to see Sharon Moore be the coach at Michigan. What's the most important coach when you hire somebody? What's the first guy you're going to hire? You've been a head coach. You hire your offensive line coach. First right. hire you make. And that's the five really? guys you got to keep intact. Yeah. That's the guy that keeps the glue of your offense together. You're coaching the most guys on the team. Mm -hmm. And those guys have to be, they work together. They don't get any glory. No one knows anything about them except the person that's coaching them. And if you have a group of guys, and there's not first rounders in that group, there's just hard working guys that just bust people's face up, up and down the, 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 the field. And when you have that and you take away a guy that has that group and has the core and the heart of your team and the heartbeat of your team, you take them away, you're losing, you're losing your team for years, mm -hmm. just not for that season. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, real quick. Whoever ends up being the head coach, what are reasonable expectations in year one, Carl? <laughs> well, reasonable that they would compete for a Big Ten title again and find a spot in the Big 12 playoffs. But I mean, I'm sorry, the national and the 12 team playoff. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the University of Michigan being a blue blood and their expectations, besides Lloyd Carr and and Jim Harbaugh, do you remember any coach between those two guys? Those are the two guys that won championships. And before Lloyd was Bo Schembechler, right? Those are the only three guys that people remember in Michigan. So when you take over the job at the University of Michigan, you know absolutely what the assignment is, is to put them in position to win national championships. And that's just the way that it is. And Sharon Moore or any other coach that comes into that position knows what that job is. And this is the life that you chose. It's easy. Beat the Buckeyes, compete for a national championship. Anything less, uncivilized. It's easy. I like it. I said quick, and that was quick. Thank you both so much for the great discussion. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, Smoke's going to be back on just a little bit later, so don't go anywhere. But make sure that you are checking out the 24-7 Sports website for unrivaled coverage of college football and recruiting. We'll have more discussions just like this on there. Our national writers are all over the major headlines in the world of college football. So lock in to 247sports.com.